Of course, we don't actually know the variances in two populations typically. Just like we don't know the variance in one population, we don't know the variance in two populations. So really what we want to do is turn this into what's called a two-sample t-test, which is much more common, um, which accounts for the fact that we don't actually know the variances. However, just like in the case of the one-sample t-test, we need to assume normality if we're not going to say that we know the variance. So now we have to assume that x follows a normal distribution and y follows a normal distribution. And each of those distributions is centered at some value, mu x or mu y. And of course, each of these distributions does have some variance. I just am not claiming anymore that I know what it is. OK, so let me slightly change what I have here. I'm going to change what I have here only very slightly. Instead of sigma squared x and sigma squared y, I'm going to write s squared x and s squared y, where those are the two sample variances that I can calculate using my data. What is the reference distribution for this statistic, this t statistic? Well, it's not technically going to be normal anymore. And it turns out that it's not technically a t distribution either, but it's really close to one. So we can think of it as a t distribution approximately with a certain degrees of freedom. What is this degrees of freedom? Well, it's estimated computationally using something called Satterthwaite's approximation. And if you use that, it's a function of the sample sizes and the variances. You get a certain number, and the reference distribution for this thing is approximately that t distribution. That all sounds really complicated. But as long as your sample sizes are pretty big, you just use a normal distribution, which is centered at 0 and is between 2 and negative 2 with 95% probability. And that is typically good enough. Importantly, all I did here was plug in those two variances. So for this particular t-test, for this particular t-test that I've done here, I'm using what's called the unpooled or Welch t-statistic. What did I have to assume here? I had to assume that I have independent samples from the population. I was, I was supposed to assume that each of those populations was normal. I had to make that assumption. OK. And then I just plugged in my estimates of the variance. 